There were six alleged moon landings between 1969 and 1972, and there's been zero moon landings since. Seems a little suspicious, doesn't it? Well, that's because we never went to the moon. Let me prove it to you with 13 reasons why the moon landing was fake. Why would America fake the moon landing? Well, at the time, the US was in the heat of the Cold War with the Soviet Union, and the space race was important because of the fear that the Soviet Union might weaponize space by putting missile launch sites on the moon, leaving the US defenseless. Now, the US had already been beaten by the Soviet Union in putting the first person into space. They asserted their dominance over us like the dog whisperer putting a hostile rescue dog from Tijuana in its place. But if we could be the first to the moon, then we'd be the new alpha dog in the world. But in this case, what creates the alpha dog isn't the size of the fight in the dog. It's the size of the lie in the dog that's in the fight. Thus, the US became the new alpha dog when we were the first nation to fake the moon landing. The US government also faked the moon landing to distract the public from the Vietnam War, which wasn't very popular. It's like if I'm doing something you disapprove of and I can distract you from it, then you don't notice your disapproval of the thing I'm still doing. Look over there, a moon landing. Now let's look at some hard evidence. The flag waving in the wind. Now take a look at the astronauts proudly planting the American flag on the moon as it gracefully waves in the wind. There's just one problem with this. There's no wind on the moon, Einstein. Evidence of a hoax. No dust kicked up on the lunar landing. Take a close look at the lunar module. You'll see there's no dust on the foot pads and it didn't leave a blast crater either. This would be approximately like diving into a swimming pool in your car and not making a splash. Guess what? The moon's surface is covered in dust. It's not like landing in a Walmart parking lot covered in pavement. So it would be impossible to land on the moon's surface without kicking up a dust storm. No stars in any photos. There are no stars in any photos taken from the moon. Now, were the stars just blotched out by the intense inner city streetlights that are on the moon? Or are there just no stars visible from the pretend moon inside of a Hollywood soundstage? I don't know. I'm just asking questions here. Pictures have the same background. Look at these two photos. Two different locations on the moon, but each have the exact same background. Looks like the set designers got a little lazy and decided they'd go with the same background for two different fake locations. The crosshairs. Crosshairs were etched into the lens of the camera the astronauts were using, yet in a number of photos, an object allegedly on the moon appears in front of the crosshairs. This is foul play. The only way an object could appear in front of the crosshairs is if the object were superimposed on the photo. Fake photos trying to fake a real moon landing. Competing shadows. There's one source of light on the moon. It's called the sun. Yet some photos have shadows going at two different angles, suggesting multiple light sources, which suggests studio lighting, which suggests not moon lighting. Not to mention photos where the astronauts are backlit by the sun, yet you can still see the detail on front of the astronauts. Hashtag studio lighting. Now, even getting to the moon alive would be impossible because of the Van Halen radiation belt. The Van Allen radiation belt. No one could survive the trip through this intense radiation belt that surrounds the Earth. Can a cat survive being put in a microwave? No, which proves astronauts can't survive being put through the Van Allen radiation belt. Buzz Aldrin doing his best Mike Tyson. Now, in 2002, Buzz Aldrin punched a reporter who was denying the moon landing ever happened. Quite the reaction. Seems like old Buzz was feeling a little insecure about something, wasn't he? Now, how did the US fake the moon landing? Well, I've got two words for you, Stanley Kubrick. He was hired by the government to direct and film the fake moon landing inside a Hollywood soundstage. And he could never tell the truth because if he did, they would kill him and he knew it. That's why in his 1980 movie, The Shining, he revealed the truth through a trail of secret messages. First, take a look at the kid Danny, who obviously represents Stanley Kubrick himself in the film. He's wearing an Apollo 11 sweater, which tells you Kubrick was Apollo 11. Next, take a look at the scene involving room 237. Room 237 obviously represents the moon because it's approximately 237,000 miles from the Earth. And take a look at the room key. It says room no 237, which means no moon. Plus, if you take the N from the word no, use it to replace the R in the word room, then flip the word backwards, you've got the word moon. 
And then after Danny enters the Forbidden Room 237, which represents the moon landing that took place behind closed doors, his sweater is tattered and he has marks on his throat, and he won't tell his mother what happened. This represents NASA's stranglehold on Kubrick to keep silent about the moon landing hoax. The cases of Tang by Jack's head in the storage closet correlate to Tang being on the Apollo missions and how the truth is supposed to be kept in the closet. We could also then reason to believe that the psychotic break of Jack Nicholson's character is Kubrick's portrayal of what the pressure was like of keeping such a huge secret for so long. And some would even say that the whole movie was Kubrick's way of apologizing for being a part of the biggest lie in human history. Stanley Kubrick's whole intent of The Shining was quite poetic in nature. Let the truth live beyond him. And indeed it did. Kubrick allegedly died in 1999 of a heart attack. Yeah, not very likely. It's more probable the government finally got their eyes wide open to how Kubrick spilled the truth about the moon landing 19 years earlier in The Shining, and then decided to execute the do not talk clause in their contract, if you know what I mean. So NASA, we haven't been back to the moon for nearly 50 years. Why is that? And NASA's like, uh, yeah, uh, in the past 50 years, technology's actually gotten worse. Yeah, the experts say human knowledge is doubling every 13 months. And yeah, your smartphone has more computing power than all of NASA's computers combined in 1969. But aside from all that, technology is actually getting worse, making it impossible to go back to the moon. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty much our airtight reason for why we haven't been back to the moon for 50 years. And all follow-up questions will be answered with the term budget cuts. You know what, NASA? I don't buy into your Cold War winning, deceiving the American people propaganda. Moon landing? Fake.